So you can take any size rectangle, but most often when we're sewing binding, we want to use a full meter or yard of fabric. So I'm going to show you how to fold it. You're going to fold the top left corner down toward the bottom right, but it's not going to make it the whole way there. The 45 degree angle is going to stop and leave you a little bit of extra. Okay, once it's nice and flat, you're going to take your bottom left corner and bring it all the way up to the top right. And again, don't worry about that strip hanging off the side. Then you're going to do the same thing again, bringing this left corner up to the top right. Hats off to whoever first discovered this fold. Then you're going to turn it on its side so that the pointy end goes off to the right and you've got all of the folds along your left hand side. Now I can bring in my shape cutter. So I'm just lining up the zero over that folded edge. And then for a two inch binding, I'm just measuring over two. One, two. And then go over two more. And because my fabric is a little bit larger, I'm just sliding, I can see the channel, sliding that right up so it stays flush. Putting my rotary cutter right back in the channel and finishing off the rest of the fabric. What's so cool is that you now no longer have to make sure that the numbers and lines on your ruler and your mat coordinate. You just need to pay attention to the lines on the shape cutter. Okay, let's see what we've got. Wow, look at this. All of these super long, stretchy bias strips. See, cutting on the bias allows even a woven fabric to maintain a certain amount of stretch. You'll be surprised how much stretch there actually is, which makes it really great for doing quilt bindings or anything where you want to make your strip take a curve. Well, that made that job easy. 